Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's session. I'm really excited to share a deep dive into a strategy with you. We're going to discuss the options caller. Now, we call this the institutional hedging strategy because it's very commonly used among institutions. And there's actually some famous mutual funds that use a version of this that I'll actually share with you today and um, best practices and how to put it together as well as the understanding. Um, and if you don't know me, I'm Jessica Inskip, the Director of Education and Product here at Options Play. My job is just to really amplify education and make sure that we have everything available across our products alike. And before we get started, of course, we do have to start with a very quick disclaimer. Um, know that I am going to use specific securities. They're purely for example purposes only. Um, there wasn't any due diligence done as far as if it is a good buy or sell. That's something that's certainly part of your process. So just know any securities that we use are just for educational demonstration purposes only. It's not a solicitation to offer a buy any sell securities. And this video is not intended to be any individual tax, legal, investment, or planning advice. Options are complex and, and we're definitely had, glad that you're joining for this educational session. All right, so as far as the agenda is concerned today, here is what we're going to cover. So first of all, we're gonna look at the review of an option. Um, I wanna make sure if you haven't traded options before that we review what an option is, but then we'll call out specifically the areas that we're going to focus on that create the options caller. Second is we are, I'm sorry, these aren't loading together, so we'll go all, we'll focus on long puts. Um, so an options caller is a combination of a covered call and a long put, but I want to make sure that you understand the goals of each individual strategy before we move on. So we'll discuss a long put and we'll discover a, discuss a covered call as well as options callers and resources available to you. And of course, we'll have QA at the end. All right, so let's start off and dive right in with what an option is. So an option is essentially a contract between a buyer and a seller. The buyer pays the premium, which means they have the right to enforce that contract or execute upon the terms of the contract, which means that they want the contract to go up in value as much as possible. That is essentially their goal as a buyer of an option contract. The seller, on the other hand, they receive that premium and they're obligated to fulfill the terms of the contract. And so their goal is for the contract to not have any value by the expiration date. And just to understand if the contract contains the right to buy or the right to sell, a call just means it contains the right to buy. A put means it contains the right to sell. So, and, and if you feel like sometimes that options have a lot of legal jargon, they do. That's because it is essentially a contract with a ton of legal terms. So for example, in, in, in this contract, it represents 100 shares of ABC at $100 per share, and it's executable at any time through the expiration period. So if this was issued as a call, the buyer would have the right to buy 100 shares of ABC at any time for $100 per share and because they can execute upon the terms of that contract, which means they want it to go up in value as much as possible. So the higher ABC is, the more this contract's going to be worth. The seller, on the other hand, they're obligated to fulfill those terms and receive a premium upfront in exchange for that obligation. So if the buyer was to say, okay, I want to go ahead and buy 100 shares of ABC at $100 per share, they're going to sell 100 shares of ABC to them at their at that price at their discretion. And there, of course, this is the important part in regards to calls, will only execute upon those terms. So the buyer of that contract will only execute upon the terms of that contract if it has value. So meaning if ABC goes well above that $100 per share, um, so that's something to be cognizant of from the sell side. But what I want to make sure that you take away from that is just with a quick review of an option is buyers have the right to execute upon the terms. They are the driver in that situation. They decide to do that. 
And because they have the right to execute upon those terms, they want the contract to have as much value as possible. Seller takes the other side of that contract. They're obligated to fulfill the terms and they are, their goal is for that contract to not have any value whatsoever. Um, and then that translates over to the four basic option strategies, which you might have seen this before, but this is a, a really great tool for if you're first learning options or are learning the complexities of options. Um, everything is essentially a mirror, and this is a, a good tool that we put together just so you can understand that. So we put um, bullish strategies on the top, so long calls and short puts, and bearish strategies are found at the bottom quadrants, so short calls and long puts. And those are individually, that is the keyword, um, bullish or bearish. Now, what you can do is layer these together, which is what we're going to do with an options caller to make different strategies and find the best um, scenarios that fit your what your, your goals are and your sentiment for the underlying security. And in this case, we'll, we're going to talk about hedging. Now, what is important and what's very helpful with this chart is, and also calls are on the left, puts on the right, You'll notice a lot of similarities, and that's why this is this is essentially helpful. Anything that's bullish contains the right to buy or the obligation to buy, but there's a purchase involved. Bearish, there's an obligation to sell or the right to sell. There is there's a sell involved at some at, at some point. Long calls or purchased options, so long call and a long put, they contain the right the right, so they're the ones that can execute upon it but they also profit from a sharp movement in their desired direction. And that's because you pay a premium for it and we need to overcome that premium, which means a sharp movement is needed, which also means if you've attended previous sessions when we talked about options pricing, you'll know that um, options don't just move in tandem with the underlying security. And that's because there are other factors that affect the options price which is extrinsic value, which is which is time and implied volatility. So the longer expiration you have on an option, the more expensive it's going to be because it has more life dedicated to it, but you have more time for it to become executable. So therefore it's more expensive, but time works against us, not for us. And so therefore, Time that time decay component is something that depletes the value of that option as it nears expiration. And as an option buyer, that's something you have to overcome. So time decay is negative for when we're purchasing options. And it helps us if we're selling options, because if we sell that option, we want to be able to buy it back at a lower price. So if there's something that's making it the price lower naturally, it's going to benefit us positively. So that's that's um, theta, if you will, and you, you learned a Greek there. So essentially, if I'm buying an option, I need sharp movement. If I'm selling an option, I am actually profitable as long as it's essentially worthless, which happens if the underlying security is just a penny above or below my strike price, depending on what side I'm in. And we'll go into these in depth, but we're actually going to focus on today is long puts and short calls. Um, as far as that's, as long as the caller strategy is concerned and it does require an underlying security as well. So we want to make sure that we focus on that. Now, when you are trading options, we tend to fall into two separate buckets and we're actually going to combine them together. But think about that four quadrant that we had there. You're either seeking income or you're gaining directionally. If you're seeking income, that's where the covered call comes in or cash cover puts or credit spreads. You're, you can be directional, but you're also neutral on your, your sentiment. And then your goal is on that seeking income side for the contract to essentially decrease in value. If you're gaining directionally, those are your long calls on puts and debit spreads, purely directional, not a neutral movement at all. And your goal is for the contracts to increase in value. So with the caller, what we're going to do is pull something from the seeking income, which is a covered call, and gaining directionally, which is a long put, to really create this strategy. And I'll talk about the benefits of it as well. So 
So let's look at a long equity put. And this is important to understand inside and out. So we'll, I'll go into much detail um, as I can. So I have an example on the screen and we'll pretend this is 30 days from now where if I'm just creating this transaction, I buy to open one ABC put expiring October 21st at a strike of 150 for seven. This means that I own the right to sell 100 shares of ABC for 150 per share at any time through the expiration date. I purchased this, I paid that premium, I can execute upon this at any time. So what I have done by purchasing a put and not owning the stock, but just, just purchasing the put, I've created a predefined sell price. And as you'll notice from this profit and, profit and loss chart is as the underlying moves beyond what I paid for the contract, which is $7 downwards, I will gain. So as the underlying security moves below what I paid for, I will start gaining dollar for dollar on that contract. Now this $7 is something that we could capture back if you close that option prior to expiration, but this profit and loss graph is assuming at expiration. Um, it's never wise to hold options until expiration. Of course, it is always your choice. But if you just know that time value is a depleting component, and if you hold an option till expiration that you purchased, you're you're going to lose out on that. Options are only worth their executable value on expiration. So if we're purchasing, we want to make sure we we sell to close those prior to losing out on that time value that we we could recapture. So max loss occurs in this position if it doesn't move at all. And that's because it's a sharp directional position. We make more money as it moves sharply in, the, in, our, in our chosen direction, which in this case is very bearish down. We break even at expiration again, when the stock moves, it moves, it moves sharply directional, but only as much as we paid for it. So we, we, have, we need it to move more than what we paid for the contract. Um, and therefore we don't start gaining until it moves beyond 43, but our gain is substantial. It's not unlimited, but substantial because the underlying security can only go to zero. Is that likely? It's possible, um, but may certainly may not be. But what you need to know about long equity puts individually is they gain value when an underlying security goes down and that value is retained and protected really till that underlying security goes all the way to the lowest possible price that it could be, which is zero. And then those gains begin, at least at expiration or that protection, when it moves beyond the amount that I paid for that put. So if I was just trying to capitalize on a downwards directional movement, that's where you would purchase to purchase a put. But we're talking about protective puts. And so the thought here is, and, and we'll reiterate this with some real examples, um, so I, I won't just use ABC the whole time, is if you own just an underlying security, so say we did purchase ABC at $150 per share, we already owned 100 shares of ABC at 150. If you were to add a long equity put to that position, now you've created what's called a protective put. Um, you've hedged your long shares against any losses beyond 143. So that's just the real difference of, and the thought there is, this is going to gain directionally as it goes beyond 143. So if I still own a security and I expect it to be bullish within a certain time frame, but maybe, maybe perhaps it's going, I, I feel the um, there's gonna be a, a bear market or I wanna protect against, losses for a period of time, because remember options have an expiration date, a married put or that that um, protective put is what could offer you protection, almost like insurance in a way for a premium that you paid. So in exchange for a premium. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer this together because remember when we buy options, that's money out of our pocket. So we can talk about adding, adding selling options to perhaps reduce how much it costs to purchase that long equity put. So that's really the, the goal of a caller.
So let's look at a covered call. So I've got an example there. We're going to sell two open, so it's our opening transaction. One ABC call expiring December 16th, the strike price of 115. And we received $5 per share for that. Now let's say that we owned 100 shares of ABC and we purchased those at $100 per share. So this is a covered call. And the reason it's covered is because our obligation, we're obligated to sell 100 shares of ABC at $115 at any time through the expiration period. And that is at the buyer's discretion. Remember, they are the ones who say, I would like to execute upon those terms. And normally they execute upon those terms only if that contract has value, which means if ABC was trading well above this $115 per share. This contract actually only has extrinsic value associated with it um, if the underlying security is at 100. So if the underlying security is at 100, it makes more sense to buy the shares at the market at 100 than executing upon the terms of the contract at 115. That would be considered an out of the money option in that scenario. So to create a covered call, First and foremost, you have to own 100 shares of an optional stock or ETF. So in this case, we own 100 shares of ABC at a cost basis of $100 per share. What you do is you sell a call and you use that stock that you already own as a collateral and you receive a premium. And what you do is you say, I am willing to sell my shares at 115 per share. And you tacked tactively choose that sell price as well. And we, we will discuss that. And what that does is creates that obligation to sell the stock at the specific price. Now for this profit and loss chart, this line right here represents just owning 100 shares of stock. Because if you own 100 shares of a security, the most you can lose is the amount that you spent, right? So we Right here, we would lose $100 per share. That's our max loss potential because we spent $100 per share. With the, what makes this covered is we've created an obligation. We've actually taken a bearish strategy and made it bullish because this profits as the security actually goes up. And what we've done is reduced the amount spent or a risk exposure rather on ABC because we brought in $5, we actually reduced this by the premium. So now our break even point is reduced from 100 to 95. And that's purely an exchange for capped upwards potential. So we have a long stock. We, the underlying security can theoretically go to any price, right? And we would make money on that. However, if we create an obligation to sell at 115, what you do is you are reducing your risk exposure, but in exchange for saying, I'm willing to sell at 115, which means if this security was to go well beyond 115, you're not going to participate in that gain potential. And hopefully that puts together what we were talking about earlier is you'll notice with the, the long put, that's a sharp directional move that we are anticipating. Whereas this, yes, it's directional, but it's, it's um, to an extent, if this moves in our favor too much, then we would be better off doing a different strategy. So that's, that's the variance. And I hope these examples put those together as the difference of gaining directionally versus being bullish to neutral. So having just a slight directional bias. All right, so let's go into a real example. And I pulled these, uh, this security maybe about uh, 45 minutes ago. So that's how up to date the prices are. And I'm actually using Shopify here as my example. So let's put it into context. So if I have a long stock and let's say that I spent 51 on that, on that stock, which is about around the current price. So I own 100 shares of Shopify at $51 per share. And that was my cost, 51 per share. Your loss potential, it's substantial because you can lose as much as you invested, but it's limited to the total cost. It's not un an unlimited loss potential, but it's limited to the total cost. And that could be quite a bit depending on what you put out. And of course, you can theoretically 
Shopify could increase to an absolute infinite price, in which case your shares will gain dollar for dollar. Um, but the purpose of creating this strategy is for hedging purposes solely and a caller essentially adds caps on your upwards and downwards side and let, let's let's add on to that and expand so the first step would be to add a protective put now these examples are assuming 30 days until expiration and i'm going to talk about some variations of this um, when you add a protective put it's going to increase the amount of capital that you're using but in exchange, there's always risk versus reward when we're dealing with options. You're limiting your loss potential throughout the expiration period. So if I purchased a put that's expiring within the next 30 days with a strike price of 50, doesn't protect my gains beyond 50, but it protects my gains beyond 50, including the amount that I spent on that put. So that's going to put me at 4780. My total cost altogether, if I was to execute this at one time is 54.20 and that's the amount that I'm protected against. Now I am protected against losses. They are capped at 47.80 and I will not incur any losses no matter how low Shopify goes because this long put is going to go up in value dollar for dollar as this underlying security moves. Now that time value component is going to deplete and that's why there is a separation between this break even price and your strike price. Now there are best practices with protective puts, and this is why I started the session talking about time value and how that options pricing component really affects options. So time value depletion is not linear, meaning you don't lose the same amount day by day. What happens is, and we call it theta decay, as the option nears expiration, and it occurs around 14 to 21 days, that theta decay or that time value depletion rapidly increases. Um, there are wonderful analogies that you can use for this. One is like a, like a balloon. If you have a hole in a balloon and, and you think about a slow leak as it gets um, less air in the balloon, all of a sudden it just rapidly deflates. Theta works very similarly, or you can, there's another great analogy with um, a bowl with a, a leak in it that develops cracks and then there's a big hole. Um, meaning that with that 14 to 21 day period it varies, it's going to very quickly lose any time value that was associated with it. And additionally, that time value is centered around at the money options, which are options that are closer to the strike price. So whenever we purchase options, so one of the best practices is having a longer time frame. So maybe maybe 60 days or 45 days, not holding them until expiration because you wanna be able to sell to close that option and recapture some of that time value. And so there are different best practices with long puts and covered calls that we will discuss. But what's important to know about the protective put is your protection is in place only for a set period of time because you have that expiration date, right? And that time value is going to work against the long put. So it's something we can sell to close or even create a new position just to account for that depletion period, which would mitigate and increase this price and have protection at perhaps a higher price. So that's what's important about protective puts. So now that we have purchased a put at a strike price of 50, cost us $3.20 per share, which now has increased our total output for purchasing Shopify to $54.20. Now to create a caller, we sell a call and create an obligation to sell those shares. Now, this is going to be a covered call and you, you can start with a covered call and then add your put. You can do this in any order that you deem fit or you can place the trade all at one time. But the purpose of adding the call is one, we're still bullish on the position and a covered call, we create an obligation at a predefined sell point. So perhaps you feel, I purchased this at, at 51 per share, 
I think that this is going to go no higher than 60. If Shopify moves beyond 60, then I am okay selling my shares. What you've done in, in this case is I still want to protect myself from a downturn because I, I feel that we're in a bear market and perhaps this may go down and I would feel more comfortable if I protected myself against losses. So that's the purpose of keeping that long put. So now what we've done is we've reduced our total cost to 5378 per share because we brought in $1.35 for that short call. Now the long put that I've chosen in this scenario is more expensive because it's closer to the current price of the underlying security. And there is purposes behind that because when I'm purchasing a put in this scenario, the protective put, my goal is to give myself protection as the security declines. And so if I choose something that's a little bit cheaper, it's going to offer me protection at a farther out price. So that's your decision of where, how far you feel the security is going to go. Um, but that's also where timeframes are important as well. This short call was selected at a higher price utilizing the best practices that we've talked about in our previous sessions, because if Shopify were to rally, I would wanna sell it at that price. Um, otherwise, if I was to choose something a little closer, then I might have a predefined sell price of $55 or something like that. And then it just wouldn't make, make sense with my max gain and, and loss scenario. So know that this is a, when we're coloring my position, it's for a duration or a set period. In this example, it's 30 days. So the long put has a 30 day expiration and the short call at 60 has a 30 day expiration. And for that expiration period only, my max loss is reduced to 378 per share rather than $51 per share, which is the amount of output if I was just to buy the long stock. But in exchange, remember risk versus reward is important. I've capped my gain potential at 622 per share, which is the difference of this spent and assuming I'd sell it at 60. So 53.78 minus 60. Um, that is the basics of a long collar. So now what I wanna do is transition this and bring up the options play platform and I'll show you what that looks like. All right. Give me one moment. All right, and let me know if you can see my screen. You can pop it in the chat. All right. So here's the color, the color that I put together that's entered right here. Now, what's good about options play and what I love about this tool is we can put essentially everything together and compare and contrast. And there is a lot of value in doing that. Um, so meaning I can modify this here to be a caller and I can look at different scenarios um, or I could even look at a covered call along put and everything together. Um, so there's, there's lots of value in doing that. Now, one thing that we talked about was assuming that these were the same expiration, which is not is not necessarily what you have to do. Now, the the famous hedge fund, it's a JP Morgan fund that implements this strategy quite a bit. They actually add another layer to it as well that I would love to show you. So let me let me walk you through both of those. So we've got our um, our long collar that we were displaying. So the 5060 and assuming that it was buying at 51. And I apologize if it was off by a few cents. That's because the um, I, I pulled these from the platform. But you can modify from here. You can adjust your strike prices, the security price, and your expirations. Now, it is best practices when purchasing an option, like I was saying, 
to have those be a longer time frame. If you have the covered call, we actually would prefer those to be a shorter time frame. 45 days is the is the sweet spot. But again, it's entirely up to you. Um, but that's because if we're buying an option, time value is hurting you, working against you. But if we're selling that option, it's working for you. And we know that happens around 14 to 21 days. So if we're selling the option, we want to account for that theta crush. We want to make sure that that happens and we are able to buy back that option at a lower price. But if we're purchasing the option, we want to make sure we sell to close that option before that happens. So that's the difference in expiration periods. So meaning what you can do, and again, entirely up to you, but this, this tool can help you put it together, is if you buy the put, choose a 60-day expiration or a longer time frame. And if we're selling a call, you can choose a 30-day time frame or a 45-day time frame. And then once that expires or are you experience that that theta decay, then you can go ahead and sell another one. So that's really best practices when you're actually imp implementing the caller is really layering your time frames to account for that theta because that's increasing your risk exposure. And we want to make sure that we we are decreasing our risk exposure, especially in it with a hedging type of strategy. So that's something we can we can certainly simulate here. Um, and then additionally, what I would like to show you is what the famous hedge fund does is they actually add another leg on the put side um, and they would add at a lower price. So it's a, a debit put spread. And what this does is it caps. So remember a long put individually is going to increase in value as the underlying security moves beyond the strike price. So that keeps moving down. And it keeps increasing in value, even if it moves down to zero. But what this famous hedge fund does is it caps that downwards potential so it can reduce how much it paid for the overall caller. So for example, um, may choose a, I'll do a 15 Delta, a 42.50. So now what we've done is we have sold a put at a, the lowest strike price that gave us another dollar, which then reduced our risk exposure again to 480. So we are con the the thought here is, and that's how you can really layer options together. When I showed you that that four quadrant, you can use the obligations associated with options and just know what occurs at each at each. So essentially, what we've created here is we own the security at around 52. We're going to sell it if it increases to 60 and we received 135. We want to have some downwards protection on this security. So we purchased a put at 50 and paid 320 for that, but we don't feel that it's gonna go any lower than 42.50. So we're gonna reduce how much we spent on that protection by bringing in a dollar two. So if I was to take away the security completely, this all together cost me um, two eighty seven purely for protection. So you just reduce the amount that you spent on the protection by by implementing it this way. Very common, very common strategy for that famous hedge fund. Um, and you can use this tool to modify and compare. And I really do think it's a it it's wonderful and even building this out. So perhaps we could do a, let's just do a long stock. I'm actually going to be easier just to build it from here. So we have a hundred shares. Let's make this the long put. And then let's modify this to back to our long caller. So these are the three strategies essentially that I showed you throughout this, this webinar is we have purchased 100 shares of a security. This is our cost. Our max reward is unlimited. Um, let's actually modify this to a protected put. Now we've increased how much we've spent, but we have protection. 
our max risk is reduced to 678 in this scenario, but our reward is still unlimited, but we've increased how much we've spent, right? Now, if we add the collar, our max reward is drastically reduced, but we have a lower cost. And our max reward is drastically reduced because we gave ourselves capped upwards potential. So that's why those expiration dates that I was talking about are important and know that this is a hedging strategy for that duration or that period that you feel the underlying security is going to move down in value. And you, of course, can can layer accordingly. Um, and then we can adjust and see exactly what happened and, and how this will affect the transaction. So you'll notice if this does go down all the way to 2797, this is gonna have the most loss. This is going to have the, um, we're protected beyond a certain point, and this is gonna have the least loss. And that's because uh, we really reduced our risk exposure by selling the call. And then we can also adjust and see the effect of time. Um, and a change in implied volatility. But of course, if it increases in value, we've capped our gain potential. So that's what's important to know there. And the use of covered calls is to, to reduce the amount that we paid for that long put or that protection. That's the purpose of it. And if you wanna take that a step further, then you add an additional short put and that's that famous hedge funds hedging strategy. Um, and of course, this tool is, is used for a lot of reasons, but I wanna make sure that we covered in detail how a collar worked. So we do have about 10 minutes left in the session, session. So I will go ahead and open it up to questions if you have any. Go ahead and feel free to um, type them in the chat window or the Q&A, I have both open. Um, and I do see your question with both long calls and covered calls are allowed in Registered Accounts Canada. Um, so normally, and it, if they allow both, you could do it, it will not necessarily be paired together. So sometimes that options platform isn't going to pair them together, but you would be able to have a covered call and a long put separately. It's not going to pair, so you're not gonna see everything. But if you do use the options play platform, what you can do is if you do decide to do this, you can just add this as a paper position and watch your gain and loss um, within this platform itself. So that's something to help you manage that strategy altogether. And you of course can adjust it and make it custom from there. But that is a, is a really good question. And that's applicable to brokers in the US as well. They separate them together. It, you Sometimes you can't necessarily buy, buy this all together and execute it as one transaction as a caller, but you can take the covered call and buy the uh, long put separately. And a recording will be sent out afterwards for those who ask. Thank you, Philip, for putting that in there. All right. Um, how much principal would this trade require? So this is just the, the amount that it costs you. So in this case, this one is 5,075, but it's, you're buying 100 shares. You add the amount that you pay for the put less the amount that you sold the call for. So that's the, the amount your output or your risk exposure would be in this scenario. Um, and just as normal practices also apply. So at options play, we do say from a risk perspective, it's very, very important to ensure that you, you utilize just a, a portion of your portfolio. You know, that's always going to be important from a risk perspective. You should never execute your entire portfolio within one position. We recommend 2%, but again, entirely up to you. Um, but that's just one way to also mitigate and account for risk. Um, and this is the TMX platform that I'm seeing, and we we did uh, add this. So if you don't see that, try clearing your cookies. If not, I'll check with our customer service and make sure that it's pushed accordingly. So how do we manage the position if the trade goes against us? What leg will be adjusted? That is a really great, really great question. Um, so let's use the actual caller 
here. So this 50-52. Um, and maybe we're going to adjust this a little as well. So this just gave us a at the money call. And we do not want to do that for our short call. So there are two ways that this can move. It can move against us as in it goes too far and goes beyond the our, our sell price, which is 60, right? If it goes beyond 60, you can see how on the simulator, this profit's not moving or it's not going up in value whatsoever. So if it gets closer to that, we would want to adjust from there. You have no reason holding that option. So we wanna be able to buy and close that. Additionally, as we get closer to expiration, you can see how I'm gaining um, profit potential as I push this out to expiration. That's that theta decay. And you can see how it rapidly happens from here to here. I wanna close that at that point as well. So it's a combination to make sure that I account for this, it's upwards movement. That's when I would want to adjust. So I would wanna adjust if it's closer to my strike or above my strike and within 21 to 14 days until expiration on the upward side. Now on the downward side, if this all of a sudden was going to go down and also depends on the expiration period, if it moves beyond, you're, you're okay selling to close that. You're going to have a small loss based on the amount that the, the premium difference between your strike prices as we were showing earlier. But if you've already experienced that theta decay and you want additional protection, you can go ahead and buy another put. And you don't have to buy a put at that same strike price. You could adjust it down to a lower strike. But of course, now in this scenario, remember the collar is just for protection in a, dirt, in a, a short period of time. The strategy overall is bullish. If it moves, that much substantially against you downwards, then that also requires a re-evaluation of how you feel about the security. If you are no longer bullish in the security, it's just going to cost you to keep creating that insurance or keep creating that protection. So in which case that's going to increase your risk exposure and it just makes no more sense to hold that security. And that's where if you expect and you want to capitalize from sharp directional movement, you're better off just purchasing the put. So I think that's an important key differentiator that you should have there. Um, and the 2% risk level does include the cost of the underlying, yes. And the purpose of that is when you trade options, we want to skew risk versus reward in our favor. So for example, if we're buying a long call or a long put, we want to make sure we are able to make three times more than what we spent and have those optimal um, strategies. If you skew risk versus reward in your favor, that means that when you do make the correct decision, because remember options have a finite life and they expire, you are going to make out better in the long run. Whereas if you're wrong, which you're going to be at some point, you don't win on every trade. That's just this natural when trading options because of that expiration period. But if you skew risk versus reward in your, in your favor on the trades that you do win, you overcome the losses in the other. So that's what's important about trading options and why we use that 2% rule. You are unable to skew risk versus reward and scale that if you're trading the entirety of your account. Meaning if you experience one loss, you're done. And that's that's not wise. Even if you're trading stock, that's not wise. Diversification is extremely important and that translates over into the options world. And if you add that layer of complexity, then that's where you really focus on risk versus reward because that layer of complexity is you're trading with a decaying asset.
what do you look for in a stock going up in this, besides a stock going up in this strategy? That is a wonderful question as well, Brent. Um, essentially, yes, you wanna be bullish on a strategy or on the underlying security. But oftentimes, even if there is healthy earnings per share or increased revenue, those fundamentally valuable aspects that we find of an underlying security, even in a bear market, something can drag it down altogether. So if for some reason, especially on the US side, if um, Powell was more restrictive than we thought, the market may completely sell off, even though that may not necessarily affect the underlying security due to their healthy valuations and maybe it has a big profit margin. But in the short term, you expect a downturn. So that's what you look for. It's accounting for those macro headwinds. Um, it's, it's if you feel there may be a decline at some sort and you want to protect yourself, you will account for that. Um, and it's, it's really those external factors that are important there. And you can use this platform to help with that as well. So this security is at the top of its trading range. Maybe you feel like it's going to break out because it's made a turn as it did here, but you're unsure of that. So that's why I chose Shopify there. They had a, had a bit of a turnaround. So perhaps you want to buy it, but you're buying it at the top of this right here, which is a shorter term resistance level because it hasn't seemed to surpass this 55 level all the way back dating to May. So if you buy the security at that time, you may be bullish on it because you feel like it may break out, but you also realize that it's from a technical perspective at the top of the trading range, perhaps you want to buy some protection just in case it goes back down to that, that time frame. And if we really scroll out on Shopify, I mean, it's had, it was very high at one point. Um, so th those are reasons as well. It's really for protection within a short period of time. And then you of course can, can, consistently sell a call to reduce the amount of your risk exposure. That's really the key to this one. All right. Well, we had a hard cutoff today at 1250, but I do really appreciate the engaging conversation and the questions that came in. I certainly hope this was beneficial. Um, if you guys do have any suggestions for future topics, please let us know. Um, you will receive an email if you registered for this with a recording and with the uh, slides as well. So we appreciate and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Oh, and the last thing I apologize, tmx.optionsplay.com. You can sign up there and it is a free trial. Thank you.